Hey guys, welcome to part 3 of what if Tanjiro was sent to the past. Last time we left off after Tanjiro defeating both Lower Moon 5 and Upper Moon 6, becoming the youngest Hashira in history and arriving just in time to save Kani Koko from her death. Without further ado, let's begin. Tanjiro would then tell Kani to rest while he takes care of the demon, however Kani stand up, gripping her swords once again. Telling him that she can't allow a kid to fight by himself while she sits back and recovers, not knowing the full extents of Tanjiro's strength, having only heard rumors. Duma would then ask them if they were done talking, using freezing clouds, to create a large wave of dangerous ice particles and then using his fans to scatter them. However Tanjiro would use dead calm once again, to protect himself from most of the damage with Kani still behind him. Seeing Tanjiro's strength, Duma would ask if he was the one to kill his friends Daki and Jiyutaro, stating that he thought he was going to be killed by Master for that. Tanjiro would then nod, using 10th form. Constant flux to slice through Duma ice constructs in an attempt to behead the demon. Holding back to make sure Duma also played with him so he could hold out until sunrise which was only half an hour away. However before he could be beheaded, Duma would protect his neck with his fans then using his fans to attack Tanjiro however Tanjiro managed to block the attack and counter. This continues until Tanjiro jumped back to dodge Duma Cold White Princess, which creates two humanoid females made of ice which shoots icy air towards Tanjiro. With Tanjiro having to rely on 11th form dead calm to defend due to the attack's extremely broad and long reach. Having recovered mostly, Kani would jump into the battle with Tanjiro switching his attacks to complement her breathing style from what he remembers of Kaneo's breathing. Noticing that there was only 15 minutes until sunrise, Duma would comment that he has to cut their play date short. Becoming slightly more serious using his Tessenjutsu to start to push Tanjiro back and completely overwhelm Kani's skill, leaving Tanjiro the only one in the fight. After receiving a crack in his kite soon mask, Tanjiro would be forced to also use more of his power. Activating his Demon Slayer mark and using the transparent world to predict Damar attacks and counter them. Noticing this, Dama would pretend to cry saying that it hurts his feelings that he didn't see him as a threat and was holding back, jumping back then unleashing Lotus Vines to capture Tanjiro. Limiting his mobility then using wintry icicles to create multiple ice spears to impale Tanjiro from above, dropping them on Tanjiro. Tanjiro would then take in a deep breath stating that he wanted an opportunity to try out his new form, shouting water breathing 12th form mesmerizing cyclone. A technique that allows the user to escape the binds of any opponent by using flowing turns to unravel the attack followed by multiple rhythmic slashes in every direction, leaving no openings. After escaping the attack Tanjiro would grip his sword, turning his blade crimson red. Then use his thunder breathing technique in tandem with his water breathing to dash at Duma using striking tide to attempt to behead Duma. However Duma manages to protect his head with the stumps of his arms and jumps back, swiftly getting serious using crystalline divine child to create five clones which surround Tanjiro. While he attempts to run away since there is only five minutes until sunrise. Tanjiro would then use flowing dance to behead all the ice clones, running after Kani who was chasing Duma. When he arrived, Dama Arms had finally recovered allowing him to unleash his last ditch attack, and most powerful blood demon technique, Rhyme, Water Lily Bodhisattva. Creating a large Bodhisattva ice statue to attack and destroy Kani. The giant statue would release a massive gust of wind capable of freezing Kani solid, forcing her to activate flower breathing final form Equinoctial Vermilion Eye. To attempt to find an opening where the attack was the weakest, however there was none, so she attempted to to use second form. Honorable Shadow Plum to defend herself, however the attacks were slipping through until Tanjiro arrived, protecting her with water breathing 11th form dead calm. Some of the attacks still got past, cutting Tanjiro up, and destroying his mask from the eyes down, now barely hanging on, however Tanjiro made sure that none of the attack harmed Kani. Tanjiro would then use Striking Tide to attempt to destroy the massive ice construct, however it was so durable that his attack barely made 5 inch deep cracks. Noticing this, Tanjiro swapped to Water Breathing 10th Form Constant Flux, 
to build up his kinetic energy, using multiple rotations, allowing Tanjiro to finally start damaging the construct. While evading the colossal melee attacks from the Buddha, finally beheading it. By that time, there was only three minutes until the sunrise Sodoma was using every ounce of his power to escape, however Tanjiro caught up to him using drop ripple thrust to impale Duma. From behind as he ran, pinning him to a tree, then shouting that he is no tragedy and a pure evil being with no remorse, then using ninth form. Splashing water flow turbulent to cut Duma into hundreds of pieces, then finally beheading him. Duma would attempt to regrow his head however since he was beheaded by a crimson blade, he was unable to and disintegrated, going to hell all alone. With the threat now out the way, Tanjiro collapsed to the ground, as the adrenaline left his body and blood loss from that final attack caught up. Luckily the backup he had called for finally arrived in the form of Koko Shinobu, Jiyutamayoka and Sabato, as well as multiple Kakushi to help tend to his injuries. Tanjiro would then wake up in a room smelling like antiseptic, a little bitter, with undertones of the artificial fragrance contained in soaps and cleaners. However there was also a sweet flower-like smell. He would then realize he was sitting in a hospital room with Kaneo sleeping next to him. Still a little drowsy due to the painkillers, Tanjiro would ask how long was he asleep as Kaneo woke up, however instead of an answer to her question, he was embraced in a tight hug. As Kani was crying saying that she thought he was never going to wake up, describing how severe his injuries were. Tanjiro would then smile apologizing for worrying her, then comically gasping for air warning Kaneo that he is going to die if she doesn't let go, with her finally letting go. Allowing him to breathe once again. He would then look to his side to see that Kani was still asleep. Noticing this. Tanjiro would inquire whether Kani was okay, as Aoi and Shinobu would enter the room answering his questions. Telling him that Kani's injuries were not as severe as his and she is just resting from over-exhaustion, and also telling him that he was asleep for five days. Shinobu would then thank Tanjiro for protecting his sister to the point he would take attacks for her so that she wouldn't be harmed too severely. However Tanjiro would tell her that there is no reason to thank him as he was just doing his job then saying that if it is necessary for her to thank him. She can do so by continuing to smile since she has a beautiful smile. She would then pass him a letter and a parcel stating that it was from Master Yuriko Dekai. Opening the letter, it would read Dear Tanjiro, I heard that you have taken down yet another upper moon, and even developed a new water breathing form and from the sounds of it, it's quite powerful. I also heard that you were injured during the battle to protect your comrade, which made me so proud to call you my student. I hope you get well soon and since you were so fond of your old kite soon mask, I have made you a new one, I hope you like it. Yours sincerely, Sakanji Yurokodeki. Opening the package, Tanjiro would see a brand new mask however instead of a sun in the corner, there was a bright red flame pattern that resembled his mark. Putting it on. Tanjiro would notice that it feels a bit more durable, thanking his master in his head, then writing a letter of appreciation for Yurokodeki. One day later, Tanjiro was discharged from his bed and began the rehabilitation training, however even while injured the cup game and tag was too easy for him even when Shinobu was his opponent. On his final day of rehabilitation, three days later, Tanjiro watched Shinobu train and not knowing how rude it sounded. States that she will never be able to learn flower breathing since she is too short and her upper body strength is too weak. Angry, Shai Nubu would yell for him to shut up unless he wants her to put him back into the hospital. Scared Tanjiro would explain that he didn't mean that as an insult, stating that what he meant is she has talents that no one else in the core has. Such as her rapid strikes and advanced knowledge of medicine and poisons. He would then tell her that she could develop her own breathing style where she is so fast that demons can't stop her from injecting them with poison like an insect. He would then help her to develop the forms from what he remembered for the rest of the day, then returning home, apologizing to his family for being gone for so long. Explaining that he was resting from an intense battle. After three days to play with his family, and drop off his paycheck to help pay for living expenses, Tanjiro was called to a Hashira meeting by the master. At the meeting, Tanjiro is congratulated for defeating yet another upper moon, upper moon 2 no less. 
Hearing this, Sainemi states that he wished he ran into upper moons all the time, with Tanjiro once again too pure for the world unknowing of how what he said sounded. States that if he did run into an upper moon, he would probably die a gruesome death, angering Senami. After calming down, the meeting continued with them just talking about demon movements and assigning missions. Tanjiro would then go on his patrol and complete a few missions for the next month, making sure to return home every day to take care of his family. In summer of that year, Tanjiro would go to the flower estate asking for the medicine for treating bronchitis and pneumonia, confused Shinobu would ask Tanjiro if one of his siblings were sick. However Tanjiro declined stating that a family friend had fallen ill and he would like to help him. Tanjiro would then thank Shinobu for the medicine running off to Mount Kijenobu, where Muijio and Yuichiro lived. Using his nose, Tanjiro found the small house, knocking on the door during the storm. After waiting a few minutes, Tanjiro is allowed in by Muijio. Seeing Tanjiro, Yuichiro would ask Muijio why he let a stranger in their house, stating that he could be a murderer for all they know. But Muijio would explain that Tanjiro had eyes like their father and father always said that helping others always came round to help you too. Tanjiro would then ask Muijio where their father is since he needs to talk to him about something. So Muijio would tell him that he went to get herbs for their sick mother and should be back soon. Tanjiro would then kneel next to Muichiro's mother, placing his hand on her forehead then realizing how hot it is, nearing 38 degrees Celsius or 101 Fahrenheit for the Americans, which is above normal body temperatures. He would then activate his mark using the transparent world to compare Muijio and his mother's lungs, realizing that the airways of her lungs were inflamed and irritated, suggesting that she had bronchitis not pneumonia. He would then pull out a bottle from his pockets, opening it up, asking the mother to drink it, however Yuichiro would stop him demanding to know what he is trying to do. Asking if he was trying to poison her. Tanjiro would then explain their mother's symptoms, telling them if she doesn't receive treatment soon, she won't make it to the end of the storm. With tears in his eyes, Muijio begs Tanjiro to help his mother, with Tanjiro comforting him telling him that if this medicine does what it is supposed to do. She should survive until she can receive proper treatment. Then feeding her the medicine. Tanjiro would then get up, telling Muijio to take care of his mother and make sure her body temperature doesn't rise too high. He would then run out into the forest, running to the location where Muijio told him the herbs grow, arriving in a few minutes, managing to locate Muichiro's father, but by the time he arrived, Muichiro's father was falling from the cliffside gripping onto the herbs. Luckily Tanjiro was fast enough to catch him, apologizing for arriving late. Muijio's father would thank Tanjiro and ask him who he is, however Tanjiro would tell him, that it can wait until they get back to his house, carrying him and running. After returning, Tanjiro would place Muichiro's father by his wife, informing him that he gave her some medicine to help alleviate the symptoms and postpone the spread of the pathogen. Mr. Tokito would then bow his head thanking Tanjiro asking him why he helped them, with Tanjiro smiling stating that helping others always come back to help him. Then also telling them that their ancestors were friends so it's the least he could do. Tanjiro would then have a serious talk with Mr. Tokito, explaining that if Mrs. Tokito doesn't receive medical treatment soon, she will die before the end of the week. He would then explain that if he is okay with it, he would like to take her to his estate so that she can receive the treatment she so desperately requires, from a professional. Not wanting his wife and the mother of his children to die, Mr. Tokito would accept the offer, thanking Tanjiro once again. Tanjiro would then explain that they will leave after the storm clears, telling them he will be back in the morning with a wagon to help transport them. As the sun finally penetrated the clouds and the raining stopped, Tanjiro would return with a wagon, telling them to get on, helping them to carry Mrs. Tokito on. He would then explain that if he was running alone, it would probably take an hour or two however since he has precious cargo, it will take half a day so they should arrive by sundown. Mr. Tokito would then ask how he is going to pull the wagon since it has four people on it and some of their belongings, and he is only a year older than his boys, however Tanjiro told him not to worry. Starting to run with the wagon, and the speed of a horse, 
going the full way with no rest, arriving just as scheduled. Since Tanjiro had sent his crow the night before to warn Shinobu to be ready, Shinobu was waiting patiently to help, jumping straight into action to carry Mrs. Tokito into the pre-sterilized room. And started performing tests. After getting the blood work done, Shinobu confirmed that Mrs. Tokito had a severe case of bronchitis stating that if Tanjiro had arrived an hour later she would have been dead. She would then explain that she will require 24-7 care and need to be given medicine three times a day to help fight against the infection and to optimize her chances of survival. She must remain bedridden for at least three months. After being thanked again, Tanjiro took his leave, telling the Tarquitos that he hopes Mrs. Tokito recovers soon and telling them he will be back tomorrow with a few friends. He would then go home and explain what had happened to his family, asking them if they mind relocating to his Hashira residence until Mrs. Tokito recovers, to keep them company. With them agreeing since it allows them to see him more often and since they are Kamadu's kindness is in their blood. In the morning, Tanjiro would carry his family to his estate by wagon like he did the previous day for the Tokitos. Upon arriving, Tanjiro would show his family around the estate since they haven't been round in a few years and didn't explore the whole place. He would then introduce them to the Tokitos explaining how his family will be staying with them, to keep them company. After getting to know Ichita more, Inosuke would ask Tanjiro to spar with him to show how much he had developed, starting with a hand-to-hand -hand fight. With Tanjiro having the edge due to his experience then following up with a full-on sword fight using wooden training swords. Impressed by how much Inosuke had improved, Tanjiro states that if he keeps it up, he might surpass him in a few years' time. Noticing Muijio's eyes shining in excitement while watching them spa, Tanjiro would then ask Muijio and Yuichiro if they would like to try using a sword, explaining their heritage. With Yuichiro declining, prethering to stay by his mother's side while pretending not to care. Tanjiro would then show Muijio the basics of using a sword such as how to hold a sword and some basic stances, with Muijio getting the hang of it quite quickly. After every mission, Tanjiro would return home and check on Mrs. Tokito and then play with his family and train Muijio and Inosuke. Tanjiro would make sure to guide Muijio through mist breathing through what he remembers of the techniques, allowing him to reach the skill of a Hashira in only four months. Slower than Cannon since he wasn't training as hard and was younger but still extremely fast. Muichiro's growth also helped to motivate Inosuke to train harder. After six months of treatment, Mrs. Tokito was finally capable of moving around without assistance and had regained most of her health back. Being able to breathe normally with only the occasional cough however she did retain some of the pain in the chest, with her infection nearly being completely eradicated. To celebrate. The Tokitos and Kamados had a big feast on New Year's, with Tanjiro inviting the Butterfly Sisters and the Hashira too and since it was New Year's. Tanjiro performed the Hinakami Kagura dance from sunrise to sunset perfectly, Mrs. Tokito commenting that he looks like a graceful spirit. After another month for regular checkups, the Tokitos were finally allowed to return home, and Muijio decided to join the Demon Slayers, becoming a Hashira in only a month. Since there was only one year left until Muzan attacks his family, Tanjiro had his family stay at his estate to keep them away from danger. Tanjiro would also spend the year focusing on sun breathing, attempting to develop new forms and come up with a strategy to combat Muzan and the remaining upper moons and their fill ins. Not wanting the people of the village to go without charcoal, Tanjiro would make sure to sell charcoal every week. On that fateful day, now 13 years old, Tanjiro ventured down the snowy mountain to sell coal, arriving home at night. As predicted, Muzan would arrive at the Kamadu residence. Opening up the door, Muzan would find a boy sitting on his knees, with a scarf covering his head and wearing a kite-sewn mask with a sword next to him. Recognizing the boy from Upper Moon Six and Two's memories, as the water Hashira, Muzan would swiftly attempt to behead the boy while his guard was down, using a massive whip-like arm which lived through the house like butter, however Tanjiro easily dodged it, saying that he had been waiting for him. Sorry for yet another cliffhanger but this is the end of this part, please drop a like. Comment down below any what if suggestions and subscribe with the notification bell enabled to be notified when I next upload. 
with that out the way this is demonic saiyan saying bye.